Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today we're discussing a watch that was originally launched in 2014. The Legacy Machine 101 has always been the most wearable of the Legacy Machines and maybe the most wearable watch that Max Booser and his friends have ever created. This example in white gold is 40 millimeters in diameter. You can see how much of the thickness is actually the cambered sapphire. So with that and the case base, it is 15.8 millimeters thick and a fairly compact 47.6 millimeters from lug to lug across the wrist with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw it on my wrist. My wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference. You can see it wears well. The curvature of the lugs mitigates against fit issues. Even if your wrist is so small that you're borderline, it's probably going to sit flat and sit secure. You can see it's not particularly thin, but then just how much of it is a cambered sapphire? Well, about half. And that indicates you could probably get most loose sleeves up and over the side of it just because of the way it's shaped. Taking a look from over the top, you can see I'm actually pulling it tight on my wrist, and yet the lugs still are not overhanging the edge. It's got a nice solidity to it, though. The case base made of white gold imparts a feeling of mass and class. The buckle, a system created by GNF Chatelain and sold to many different brands, here branded MBNF. You can see that it features a titanium leaf spring internally, and then externally we have a matching white gold buckle. We have the battle axe motif, the double-sided battle axe motif that is the symbol of MBNF. And then we have a strap that is MBNF factory, rubber on the bottom, a sort of very thin rubber insert to protect the large rectangular scale black alligator leather from the sweat, moisture, oil, and grit of the wrist. So that's the purpose of that rubber. It also creates a very supple feeling against the hand and against the wrist. And you can see this is a brand new MBNF factory strap. It has a folded edge, a monotone stitch. And then the case band is fairly dramatic. As you can see, it's defined by the polished lip of the case back, the overhanging polished lip of the bezel. We have lugs that are stepped out fairly dramatically from the case band. You can see they're vertically satinated in profile while the case is longitudinally satinated. We have a little bevel on the edge of the lugs and then they're polished on their tops. Taking a look at the crown, note it's off-center. We again see that double-edged battle axe logo. And then the bezel has a very shallow conical plane and a very thin vertical lip, but it's a prelude to what comes after, one of the most dramatic sapphires you will ever see. You can see how tall and arcing that black polished steel balance bridge really is. There's a huge extended balance staff. You can see the roller table and then a huge balance staff extending up from the roller table to the wheel itself. The balance wheel is free sprung with recessed variable inertia bolts. It beats away at 2.5 hertz or 18,000 vibrations per hour. And the combination of the slow beat rate and the enormous 14 millimeter diameter creates a very pleasing aesthetic, but it is modern. In addition to being a free sprung balance, you can see it's braced on two sides by a full balance bridge, and it uses a handmade overcoil hairspring, so no matter what position this watch is in when it's on your wrist or your dresser at night, the hairspring is gonna breathe concentrically and keep very consistent time. We have two white lacquered subdials with polished borders. You can see we have a 45 hour power reserve indicator for the manual wind power reserve over what is effectively six o'clock on the dial. And then we have your hours and minutes. You can see the engraved legacy machine name on a dial that features a combination of a nickel anthracite coating and a snailed texture below. Take a quick look at how attractive the bridge for the escapement is. You can see the wheel and the anchor both have been black polished and then the bridge features satination across its top and beveling on its profiles with black polished screws that feature chamfered slots and circumference. And again, check out the specular finish and fully rounded polish of that balance bridge. Taking a quick look at the reverse side, Kerry Voodleinen, assisted. He's one of Max's friends. MBNF is Max Booser and Friends. And Carrie was one of the friends in this instance. He had specific input on the shape and architecture of the bridges, their relative size vis-a-vis -vis each other, and also elements like the use of golden chiton for the pivot jewels, broad bevels, enormous Cote de Genève, a traditional pocket watch style center wheel architecture, and then solarization 
action on the ratchet wheel atop the barrel and the crown wheel. You can also see that all the screw heads likewise on the back are black polished with chamfered slots and circumference. We have perlage or engine turning on the base plate. You can see how wide and luminous and lovely the Cote de Genève are. You can see how they have a real darkness gradient from one side to the other. That's how you know you're looking at abrasive wheel Cote de Genève and not the stamped kind. Get a little bit closer and you can see that the interiors of the drivetrain wheels have also been beveled. So the inner circumference as well as the spokes and you can see that creates sharp interior angles on a micro surface which is exceptionally difficult to do. The golden chiton, they don't really have any functional purpose today but they remind us of a time when watchmaking was more primitive and the pressed chiton with a jewel inset was often the only way to press a jewel precisely into bridges and plates. You can also appreciate that enormous screws are used for aesthetic purposes and then the beveling that we have here this is the true mirrored type finished with some sort of gentian wood no doubt rather than a handheld drill bit this is a beautiful movement all this is 30 meters water resistant so please don't take that 23 jewel manual wind wonder swimming there are other mbnfs for that reach out to team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this white gold legacy machine 101